the East African Rift. Some of the many great dividing lines on Earth are so huge that their true beauty can only be admired from space. Let us orbit around the Earth. This is how our planet looks from the International Space Station. As we are flying above East Africa, a line of blue spots appears. This garland of lakes tells us that the continent of Africa is splitting. This is the Great Rift Valley, a huge geological formation. Volcanoes line up on its two sides. One of them is the old Dienyo Lengai. The local Maasai people call it the Mountain of God. It is still active and it may erupt any minute. At the lowest points of the Great Rift Valley, we can see freshwater lakes. The geysers of the Lake Bogoria show that there are major transformations going on below the surface. Flamingos gather in big groups in the shallow water of the lake. In the Lake Manyara, hippos guard their territory. In the Lake Nakaru, pelicans are searching for food. In the Lake Baringo, a member of the Niemps tribe is fishing on his boat, made of fastened branches. On one side of his boat lies the African plate, while on the other lies the Arabian and Indian plates. Right below the boat, the Earth's crust is thinning. The width of the Great Rift Valley varies from 30 to 100 kilometers, and its depth can be several kilometers at some places several thousand kilometers long. It reaches from the northern part of Syria to Mozambique. The Great Rift Valley is already huge, but it will get even bigger with time. And what will happen when the continent of Africa eventually splits? Salty seawater will flow into the lakes and a new ocean will be born. If we fly over this area in 10 million years, we will find an ocean in place of the lakes. Solar Eclipse and Lunar Eclipse The Earth and the Moon are both lit by the Sun. If the Earth passes through the shadow cast by the Moon, or vice versa, one of two kinds of eclipse occurs, solar or lunar. In the event of a solar eclipse, the Moon obscures the Sun, partially or totally. This can only happen during a new Moon, where the dark, complete shadow cast by the moon, the umbra, passes over the Earth's surface, this is known as a total eclipse of the sun. A lunar eclipse takes place when the moon moves into the Earth's shadow. This can only occur at full moon. Why is there no solar eclipse at every new moon and no lunar eclipse at every full moon? This is because there is a five degree difference between the orbital planes of the Earth and the moon. Therefore, it is a rare occasion for the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun to become aligned. The Atmosphere The atmosphere surrounds us everywhere on this planet. We take its presence so much for granted that we often manage to forget it. It not only provides us with the oxygen which is essential for us to breathe, but it also protects us from dangerous radiation and causes most of the meteors hurtling toward the Earth to burn up. Air is what makes the combustion of our fossil fuels possible as well as civilian and military aviation and the spread of sound waves. 
However, this ocean of air is only a thin membrane compared to the dimensions of the Earth itself. Its gases that grow thin as we head upward gradually give way to airless outer space. Although it has no clearly defined upper limit, scientists tend to estimate a thickness of a thousand kilometers. The atmosphere surrounding our planet is a mixture of a number of gases. Its major components are nitrogen, oxygen, and noble gases such as argon. These constitute 99.99% .99 of the volume of the air. There are also small amounts of trace gases in the air, such as water vapor, carbon dioxide, ammonia, hydrogen, and sulfur dioxide. Other liquids and solid substances such as dust and soot enter the air primarily through industrial pollution, volcanic activity, and wind effects. Factors of warming The warming process on the Earth's surface takes place at different rates, depending on a number of environmental factors. Let's have a look at them. The angle of incidence of the sun's rays. The greater the angle at which the rays reach the surface, the larger the amount of heat energy will fall on one unit area. This is why warming is strongest in tropical regions and weakest in polar regions. However, the terrain can also influence the rate of warming because, for example in the northern hemisphere, the angle of incidence is greater on the southern slopes than on the northern sides of hills. Reflecting light from the Earth's surface. You have surely noticed that in the summer you feel warmer in black clothes than in white ones. This is due to the albedo effect. Let's prove it with an experiment. Find a sunny spot and leave some water there to warm up in a black tin and in a white one. Then dip a thermometer in each tin. We notice that the sun's rays have warmed up the water in the black tin more. The albedo effect influences the warming of the Earth's surface as well. The radiation is absorbed by dark soil and forests, but reflected by snow-covered areas and light-colored soil. The duration of radiation. There is a set number of sunlit hours at every point on Earth, but the change of seasons and clouds causes fluctuations. For example, in Mediterranean areas, the sun shines for up to 2,500 to 2,800 hours a year while in areas with an oceanic climate, there may be as little as 800 hours of sunshine. The Jovian Planets In addition to the terrestrial planets, the other group is the Jovian planets, or gas giants. These orbit much farther out from the Sun. Their size is larger than the rocky planets. Under their gas atmosphere is a liquid layer with a dense core in the center. They have rings and many moons. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system and the fifth from the Sun. The composition of its thick, dense atmosphere bears a close resemblance to that of the Sun. Its cloud cover is separated into relatively light and relatively dark bands. Swirls can be seen along their boundaries. The largest of these is the Great Red Spot, 
Its diameter is longer than the Earth's equator. On the surface of one of its moons, Io, large-scale volcanic activity is taking place even today. On another moon, Europa, it is suspected that liquid water could be found under its icy surface. Four of Jupiter's largest moons were discovered by Galileo with his rudimentary telescope. Among them was Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system. The sixth planet from the Sun is Saturn, which is similar to Jupiter in many respects. Strong winds and storms swirl in its banded atmosphere. Saturn's main feature is its spectacular ring system, which is composed of tiny pieces of ice and rock. Saturn has 62 known moons, with new moons being discovered every year. The largest one, Titan, even has its own atmosphere. The dense atmosphere of the seventh planet, Uranus, is composed of hydrogen and helium. The planet was discovered by German astronomer William Herschel. Like Venus, it rotates in the direction opposite to its orbit, with its axis leaning strongly to the side. One year on Uranus is as long as 84 Earth years. Since its axis of rotation is almost parallel to its orbital plane, its two poles face the Sun for about 40 years each. The eighth and most distant planet from the Sun is Neptune. Its existence was predicted before it was discovered through observations of irregularities in Uranus's orbit. Its position in the solar system was calculated and then it was spotted soon after. A huge oval whirling region in its cloud cover is called the Great Dark Spot, which is large enough to encompass the Earth. The Moon The Moon is the fifth largest satellite in the solar system. It orbits the Earth at a distance of 384,000 kilometers. Its diameter is a quarter of the Earth's. Its mass is only 1 81st of that of the Earth. Therefore, its gravity is weaker. Its surface warms up to 130 degrees Celsius during the day, but Due to the strong heat radiation, it cools down to 160 degrees below zero Celsius at night. Its surface is mainly composed of volcanic rocks covered by a thick layer of debris. We can see darker, lower-lying basins, so-called seas, and lighter, higher plateaus on the Moon. The basins, with the mountains and craters ringing them, were created by gigantic meteor impacts. However, the volcanic rock layer and craters created by geological processes prove that there also used to be active volcanoes on the Moon. So far, the Moon is the only celestial body, apart from the Earth, where man has ever set foot. We choose to go to the Moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, U.S. President John F. Kennedy announced on the 25th of May 1961 that during the course of that decade, man would travel to the moon and return safely back to Earth. challenge is one that we're willing to accept. The first manned mission, Apollo 11, lifted off in July 1969. And on the 21st of July, the first people to set foot on the moon were Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. 
These were the first words Armstrong spoke as he emerged from the lunar module. During the Apollo program, which cost $19.5 billion, 12 astronauts had the opportunity to land on the moon. The six lunar modules spent altogether 300 hours on the surface and returned to Earth with 379 kilograms of lunar rocks. The terrestrial planets. The planets closest to the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, have relatively small mass, but high density. All of them have a solid crust and an atmosphere, either thin or dense. We call these rocky or terrestrial planets. Mercury is the innermost planet in the solar system. It is rarely visible due to its proximity to the Sun. Its surface, with its impact craters and basins, is similar to the Moon's. The temperature on the lit side is very high. On the dark side, it is extremely cold. Among all the planets in the solar system, the days are the longest and the years are the shortest on Mercury. Since one rotation around its axis takes exactly as long as one orbit, so Mercury always shows the same side to the Sun. The second planet from the Sun is Venus, also called the evening star because it is the first light in the evening and the last in the morning still visible in the sky. The temperature on its surface exceeds 450 degrees Celsius. It has a thick cloud cover and the atmosphere is turbulent with violent storms. Due to the high carbon dioxide content, the greenhouse effect has overwhelmed the planet. The craters on its surface signal volcanic activity and meteor impacts. It rotates around its axis in the opposite direction to its orbit. The third planet from the Sun is the Earth, as far as we know, the only one where life exists. Its two defining motions are rotation around its axis and revolution around the Sun. The Coriolis force, which you will learn about later, and the Earth's characteristic geoid shape are the consequences of rotation. The fourth planet from the Sun is Mars. Its reddish color is caused by its rocky surface rich in iron. Many of its characteristics are similar to those of the Earth. The speed of its rotation, its axial inclination, the formation of climatic zones, and the changing seasons. The average surface temperature is 25 degrees below zero Celsius. The highest volcanic peak reaches 22 kilometers, but the surface formations include crevasses of varying shapes and sizes, valleys resembling dried out riverbeds, and large plains as well. Its atmosphere consists mainly of carbon dioxide, which, together with the water it also contains, freezes in the polar regions, forming ice caps. 